In this video, let us learn how a voltage gated sodium channel works. It has two gates. The extracellular gate, which looks like a lid, is known as activation gate. And the intracellular gate, which looks like a plug, is known as an inactivation gate. When the cell is at rest, that is at resting membrane potential, for example, let's say it is minus 70 millivolt for this cell, the activation gate remains closed and the inactivation gate remains open. At this stage, the ion channel is called to be in a state known as the deactivated state. Because the activation gate is closed. From this state, when the cell gets some kind of stimulus, for example, there can be some sort of action potential which is coming into the cell. At that condition, this deactivated state goes into something known as the activated state. Activated state in which the activation gate opens, starts to open and the inactivation gate remains open as it is. This way, as both the gates open up, sodium can trickle into the cell. Sodium trickles into the cell. What it leads to? It leads to something known as, suppose when there was a resting membrane potential at minus 70 millivolts, then there was some stimulus uh, action potential which took it up to a higher potential like minus 55 millivolt per se. If that is the threshold potential, at threshold potential, the sodium channel gets activated and that leads to influx of sodium from the extracellular compartment to intracellular compartment and that leads to something known as a depolarization. And when it reaches to around minus plus 30 millivolts, that depolarized state, that leads to something known as that leads the sodium channel into a state known as inactivated state. Inactivated state in which the activation gate remains open but the inactivation gate closes up and as this happens the sodium ions from extracellular compartment can no longer move into the cell. That pathway is blocked and thus as sodium cannot move in, but in any cell, there is a continuous efflux of potassium from the cell through leaky potassium channels. The net cations within the cell fall and the cell potential again starts to fall down. When the cell potential falls further and goes into a state known as hyperpolarization, at that state, your inactivated sodium channels go back into the original state which is known as the deactivated state and this is how the cycle goes on repeating itself <clears throat> so to revise up the thing what happens at rest when the cell is at resting membrane potential the activation gate remains closed inactivation gate remains open which makes the net channel closed and this state is known as a deactivated state from deactivated state, based on some stimulus, for example, an action potential, the cell goes into something known as activated state, in which the activation gate opens up and the inactivated gate remains open. And hence, the net channel opens up and there is an influx of sodium from extracellular compartment to intracellular compartment. And the process of getting the deactivated state into activated state is known as activation. The activated state, when there is depolarization, goes into something known as inactivated state in which the activation gate remains open but the inactivation gate goes and plugs the sodium channel from intracellular side and that leads to closure of the channel and sodium ions can no longer come in. As sodium ions no longer cause influx but potassium channels are going out from the cell through leaky channels, the net cations within the cell drop and hence the potential of the cell drops. This process of taking an activated sodium channel to inactivated state is known as something known as inactivation. As the cell potential drops, it goes into hyperpolarization. That inactivated state goes into back into deactivated state where the activation gate closes and the inactivation gate opens up leading to net closure of the gate. And this process is known as deinactivation. So this is in brief the idea of 
functioning of voltage gated sodium channels